little bit of time with us this afternoon. Today we have Amanda Webster who is going to present her gifts. And I think we're in 30-ish minutes. Yeah, that's it. That's awesome. That will be it. <laughs> Something close. Actually, I think it's what? 20-ish tools in 30-ish minutes. There we go. 20-ish and 30-ish. So, Amanda, thank you. And okay, turn table to you. Okay. Well, with everything technology related, we'll see how this laptop works out today. Mm -hmm. um, the purpose of this, when I was putting it together, is just to um, show you a whole bunch of different technologies that you can use um, to assist in your teaching and do it really quickly, and then you can take what you want and go back and try it out. Um, I will send the presentation to Rachel, so they'll put it up on the TLF website, so you can go in. The links to each of the tools that I talk about are on the presentation, so you can go in and, and just link directly from the presentation, if you would like. Okay, the first ones, let me grab my notes, actually. I just went off the camera. And the first ones I'm going to talk about are the, some different Canvas tools that you may or may not be aware of. Uh, the first one I like is in Canvas called Message Students Who. And you can access this from within your grade book. Are, is anyone not familiar with that? Message people who have not taken the test. Sure, um, yeah, and I would love to be able to jump out. We'll see if we can do that. So, within the course, I can go into the grade book. This is just a demo course, so there's no FERPA restrictions here if it goes into the course. I can select a specific assignment that I have set up that's processing the request. And from the speed grader, or from the gradebook, I can access the link that says to message students who. So I can message students who haven't taken, or have submitted, or scored a sco uh, scored above a certain point, or scored below a certain point. And I use this in one of the classes that I taught. Um, I just sent out a quick uh, message to the students who scored 90% or better. So here's haven't submitted, haven't been graded, scored less than, scored more than. And um, just sent a quick message saying, great job, you know, I can tell that you've studied, and then sent it out. And it blind, co it blind copies everyone, so they don't know that other students are getting the message. Um, and I actually had quite a few students email me back, kind of like, yay, thank you, I'm so proud of myself, I thought I did good. So very little effort on my part, um, but a good, uh, big impact on the students. So that's from within the grade book. Now show me. So from the grade book, I would just pick any assignment, and I just click the down button, and then message students who. And it'll populate based on haven't been graded, haven't submitted, scored less than, or scored more than. And then it just sends them a quick message. All right, maybe we'll just go this way so I don't have to keep going in and out. So the next one, actually, Um, in Canvas is the speed grader. You can provide audio or video feedback to your students, audio or media feedback to your students within speed grader. So I'm going to just jump back into my class and show you again how I would do that. So when you're in speed grader looking at your assignment or the assignment submission, you see that here. And then over to the right, you see the submission details. You can add a grade, um, a rubric. And then down below, you'll see that you can attach a file. You can do video comment by clicking here. So if I wanted to talk to the student about their specific submission, I could do that while my, my face is showing. And then I could also do audio comments as well for the students to personalize it a little bit for them. Do they have any problems opening up those files? Or I haven't heard of any. The hardest one is just finding them or knowing that they're there. So it doesn't alert them that that comment's there. So do you suggest we put in the comment box, see video comments? Yeah. OK, the next one in Canvas are editable, editable wiki pages. <laughs> Say that three times fast. <laughs> So when you're creating a page within Canvas, like any content page that you may have, you can allow the students to edit that page as well. So when I create a new page down at the bottom, I have this option to allow teachers and students to edit the page. And this changes it so the students can go in and add comments. So this would be for any sort of collaboration assignment that you may have. Um, 
this is specific for this wiki page. I'll talk about the groups I think is next. How is that different than the discussion with like a discussion board? This would not be within a discussion at all. So this is just any content page within Canvas. So can I tell how I use it? Yeah, use sure. It? So in, in my marketing education class, I wanted them to sign up for to teach um, a certain lesson, and they signed up under which day they wanted and their topic. And so it was just a page, and they could go in and put their name and their topic on the couch. It's on one single page. And then I would link this page to whatever content I have within a module, within an assignment, et cetera. So do you have a table ready for them to put their materials? <coughs> I put times down like or Monday, yeah, Tuesday. So if I wanted them to sign up for a time to present, and I, first, well, first I wanted them to know what they were going to present, mm -hmm. and then they chose a time, and just like she has up there, and then they just went in and put their name next to the date and the time. Great, thank you. Okay. Do you ever have issues where a student go in and erase somebody's name and put theirs there instead? No. That's always yeah. I'm sure it's the other possible. Person, the other Sometimes person would let you know. Yeah, you can't tell who's changed. It shows, yeah, it shows the last person that's edited the page, but it wouldn't show you a list of, oh, you could probably go into this analytics that would find out if you really wanted to, just see who's edited that page. So that's edit, editable wiki pages within Canvas. Canvas also has conferences, um, similar to like a Skype type of thing, big blue button. Um, it's just a link over on your left navigation. You can click on it, read this page, and then you can set up a new conference. Um, so if you wanted to be able to contact your students, this, and it saves in Canvas for 14 days. After 14 days, it's not retrievable. So if you want to keep something longer than 14 days, then we recommend Adobe Connect. At this point, you'd have to contact IT using that. What? How do you use that? Is it written? Is it? It's video. It is video. Uh -huh, video. So yeah, it's just like Skype. Uh huh. Okay. It's just within Canvas. It's yes. already set up within Canvas. Yeah. Okay. Skype share your screen. I don't know. A little so. different than. So what will that look like if I clicked on new conference and make a new conference? So I set my duration, enable recording, no time limit if I don't want a time limit, description, invite all my course members. And then um, I, would, I could start that conference whenever that time arose, uh, okay. the students would just log into that conference. So I would enable the conference button, they would click on that conference, and they would join the conference. Okay, and then, so what, do you see them? Oh, or, so they, okay. So I can uh, do the microphone, the listen, share my screen, and then I would see their names over here. I see. I really like that. So they see your screen, but you don't see. I think that. they can share. Okay. I think they can share. But yeah, this is this is what you would see as the instructor. Yeah, there's the cameras down there. All right, next one is Canvas groups. So if you're not aware, Canvas also has the options to create groups. Um, we, we provide a whole training on this if you're interested in more information. But um, it, it provides a place for the students to meet. So I'm going to click, it's within the People tab, so I click on People. I've already created a group, but you can create more groups and add people. So here's my Happy People group. And within this group set, Happy People, I've got two different groups, Happy Person 1, Happy Person 2. And then I can add my students here to a specific group. I can change around the students within groups. 
I can auto assign as well. Canvas will do that for me. And then what I like about the groups within Canvas is that it does create a separate spot, a meeting spot for those individuals within that group. So if I click on their group name, maybe I have to go over to the screen, visit the group homepage. It kind of creates this mini class within the class just for the group. So over here, I'm within this happy person group class, if you want to think of it that way. I've got that specific group has a home page, they have announcements, they've got pages, access to the people, discussions, files, conferences, and collaborations. So everyone within that group has access to these things within this specific, this little mini class, which is really nice for the groups. So for a group project. Uh-huh, yep. Yeah. And then it create, it kind of also for the instructor, I like it because it creates um, a timeline of activities so you can kind of see what they've been doing as well without really spying on them, but you're spying on them. <laughs> so if I have, I have discussion groups, or discussion questions on the discussion board, and I have 70 in my ethics class this semester, so could I split them into groups of 10 or 15? Uh -huh. Yeah, and you can, yeah, and you, when you set up the group, you can have it so Canvas automatically assigns it, and then you can go around and switch if you know of issues between students, or so, you can manually do it. Okay, so you, you go to people first and set uh -huh. up the groups, and then you can assign them on discussion boards and stuff like that, or how does it tie together? So you create the groups first, and then within the discussion, when you create the discussion, you can set that for a specific, for the groups. Question? So I have uh, groups of 10 for one assignment, and then three weeks later I put them in groups of 15, and I just, how do I do that? You would just create a new group, a new group set, call it whatever, and then Canvas can auto-assign those if you want. Okay. Yep. Again, we provide said, an hour, hour and a half training on groups. It's in Training Tracker if you're interested in that one. Amanda? Yeah. Do you know, do they get notifications that say you've been added to the Happy People group? They do. They do. And then when they're in, under here, it shows up courses and groups, and it will show if they're in a group, it'll show over here too. They're different groups. So yeah, it does provide those notifications for them. And then the last one with Canvas um, that I was gonna talk about is peer review. And um, if you're not aware, Canvas has a peer review um, capability. And if, when you're creating an assignment, you just select at the bottom of the assignment um, that this is a peer review assignment. So this is where I can set it as a group, and then this is require peer reviews. Then you can manually assign or automatically assign those peer reviews. And it um, notifies the student that they have a peer review, and you can set that up that they have to submit first, etc. Um, but it allows students to go in and review each other's work. It's kind of a nice feature all encompassed with Canvas. And we have another training that we provide, Andre and I do on that one as well. I think that's another hour and a half. It's a training tracker. All right, next one we're going to move to are some different Google tools. So Google Drive and Google Docs, a very powerful tool for collaboration as well as just for maintaining your own files. And when you log into your Weaver account, click on the little square button here, the apps, and you can get access to your drive. And this allows me to store files and access the files from anywhere I have an internet connection, fast internet connection. Which isn't here. Yeah, which is not here. <laughs> And so same file structure as you would have anywhere else. You can set up folders, etc. And then the other nice thing is that you can share content. So if I go down to my 20-ish tools in 30 minutes, um, I can share this specific folder. So it makes collaboration, or this specific file, sorry. It makes collaboration nice because you're not having to pass back and forth a file or you're not having to email back and forth a file. 
Um, I can allow people to edit, I can allow people just to view, um, I can get a shareable link. So if I have a document and I just want to share it with my class, I can get that link and paste it into a Canvas page. Um, if I want to add collaborations, then I would let everybody edit and then get that link. I've used that for sign-up sheets before, use Google Docs. Kind of parallels Microsoft Office a little bit. Those little bit of names there, but they look very much. SkyDrive is not what they're, what's theirs. Microsoft Office has OneDrive Live? OneDrive, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's Similar. This is. Yeah, the yeah. word, the, 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 the function. The doc. Yes. Yeah, the yes. So, yeah, you have Google Docs, Google Spreadsheets, yeah. um, which is not as uh, encompassing, encompassing as uh, Excel. I still like Excel better than Google Spreadsheets, just because I can do more with Excel. Um, and then presentations, this presentation was created in Google Presentations. I think you only get five gigabytes. I can't remember what, yeah, it might be that it's um, set up through Weaver. Um, you can you can store any of your files, though, in Box, mm -hmm. if you needed to. Okay, Google Forms is another part of the Google Drive, Google Docs. Um, you can create forms, surveys, quizzes, etc., and then share the form. So this picture that you see over here, this is an actual form I created for an instructor to put in her directed readings course. So they just fill out the form, and then it input, inputs the information into a spreadsheet. You can update, you can um, tell the spreadsheet to email you when a new form is submitted, so then you know you can go in and look at that. And um, this is her contract for her directed readings class. There's some links there on how to how to work um, Google Forms. Google Hangouts, um, another similar to Skype, all through Google. You can message, do video calls. It's free, um, up to ten people, so you can connect with up to ten people across computers, Android devices, Apple devices. My husband was in Africa back in January for some military stuff and we were able to connect via Google Hangouts. Really cool. Without paying the $5 a minute <laughs> charge. Okay, the next one is third party tools. Um, check out the Jello Time link when you view the presentation on your own. Um, so this first one, Wix, it is a website creation site. Um, very easy to use. So if you have students that want to do e-portfolios, um, I really like Wix for that purpose. Um, again, it's very easy to use, very intuitive. Um, you can go in and, and learn it um, fairly, fairly easy. You don't have to co know how to code, don't know how to know HTML or any of those CSS coding, um, but it's still very easy to customize and it's free. Uh, Scoopit is a content curation platform, so it goes out and searches um, all the, all, a whole bunch of different websites and finds the content um, that you that whatever you have set it up to find, and then creates kind of like a looks like a little bit of a Facebook page for you, it's, but it's within the Scoopit, and um, it just shows you all the different content relating to that specific item. So if you wanted to find information about grammar resources for your students or online quizzes or anything like that, you could create the, that's called a scoop, and then it goes out and searches all the different uh, websites and, and um, curates all that content into one, one location for you. Merlot 2 is a open educational resource so it's a whole bunch of different content that individuals can upload. Uh, what I like about Merlot is that it's peer reviewed. So you get a whole lot of content, but then you also get some really good content because it is peer reviewed. Um, but they've got hundreds of different topics that if you're looking for lesson helps or ideas, um, you can look and search the Merlot webpage and find a bunch of different ideas to help you. Jing or Snagit. Jing is the free version. Snagit is the paid version. It's a screen capture software. Um, so you can allow you to do image or a video from your computer. And then it, um, you, it, it does require a download. So it, it doesn't go out to the web. So this one requires a download. You install the software on your computer and then you can capture any images or your, um, screen, your, your screen capture 
Um, I, I really like this. It's short. You have to keep it to five minutes for your videos, but I really like this for that reason um, because it can be really short. So if you're just doing a quick tutorial and um, you have someone who doesn't quite understand something, you can show them directly within Team. And then you can share um, that as a link. So you can share the video as a link or you can send it to them as a video. So they don't have to download the video. They can actually just click on the link and view the information. And then Snagit is the paid version. I think it's about 40 $40. It allows up to, I think, 15 minutes of screen capture video. Screencast-O-Matic is um, a web-based version. There isn't any software that you have to download, um, but it's a web-based version of screen capture software. So it can record on Windows or Mac. No software installation is required, and it is free up to, I think, 15 minutes. So you can record up to 15 minutes. Customatic, and there is pricing upgrades if you're interested. That one's really easy to use. Yes, yeah. so very. I like, I like that one. Lately, yeah. it's not. Have you it's used it lately? Lately, lately? lately, it has Java problems. Really? Yeah. But if you save, so it gives you multiple ways to download your uh -huh. video file. So we're recommending that you always do it as an MP4. Okay, and then that's what it, I've done. Yeah. Then you're perfect. Some okay. people are viewing it online with Java. Joellen, how do you use that in your class? When I did, when I moved one of my classes to online, I did little snippets on each chapter. What I would have discussed in class, I really condensed it down to about 10 minute videos. Oh, okay. And put it on the online class. Explain everything is a app, an application for your tablet or your mobile device. And it's a screen capture software, screen casting software. Um, and an interactive whiteboard tool. So it allows you to annotate and draw, animate directly on your iPad or your device. Um, and you can sync it up to presentations. So you could, I could be on my iPad and showing you that while we were doing the presentation. There, it, it, it does cost, I think the last time I looked it was about $3. So it's not, it's not terribly expensive. There's a lot of different um, applications available. Um, the, from the research that I, that I did seem like explaining everything was kind of the one that was rising to the top. So, but there are other ones out there. So this one available. is rising to the top? Mm -hmm. Pull Everywhere, um, I really like. It is an audience response system that uses your mobile, your mobile phones or the web if you've got access to the internet um, to be able to create polls. I want to grab the link, I have to go to presentation mode and then wait another five minutes. So let's just do this. <laughs> do the students need to have a clicker or anything? They do they not. Need phones. On their phones, which is, phone. yeah. Out of five years I used it, only once did I not have a student that had, didn't have a phone. That's and they can do it with a link if they happen to be at a computer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they, um, so we could actually respond to this poll right now. And then you can embed, embed the poll within to a PowerPoint presentation. So as you're presenting your lecture, your information, et cetera, you can see the live responses right there in front of you. Um, so if I responded to this, you'd be able to see this rise or, or fall depending on how I, how I responded. So it is free up to, I want to say 30 responses maybe. And then after that, you, you have to upgrade and pay. It does not keep um, forever either. Correct. I went back to use one from a previous year and it was gone there. Uh, up to 30 total responses. Uh huh. Yeah, so if you've got a class that's less than 30, yeah, then you'd be fine. But if you're presenting to something, a larger oh, okay. audience, then you would have to have, um, you'd have to upgrade. How much is the cost on this one? Is it cheap, like? I didn't yeah. look at the cost. I have two, but I, I like it so much. I, it was cheap. Twenty dollars monthly. You can pay a lot if you want. Fifty to one hundred, eighty dollars. Um, 
allows you to create online flashcards and study tools. Um, you can create and share the sets that you that you've created. I really like Quizlet um, as a good flashcard software. And you can create an account. You can also just take other Quizlets that other people have created. So if I wanted like Spanish terms. Could do a search and find a whole bunch of um, groups or sets that other people have created or I can create my own and then you can see from here how it works um, once I have the Quizlet created they've got different study modes they've got flashcards and then they've got a couple different games that you can play I like Seattle if you don't have too many terms yeah and the students seem to like it too. They um, they'll play with it as you can see it's timing, so it's kind of got that little game feel associated with it. And they'll we've heard of scenarios where they'll where they'll sit and play and try to beat their time. This is called Scatter. This is called Quizlet, and this is the game Scatter within Quizlet. So once you create the flashcards, this is what the flashcards look like, and then it can it can create a game from there. And it does have an embed code where you can embed it into Canvas, into a Canvas page. So then they can play directly within Canvas. The other thing I like about Quizlet is that it's got a mobile app associated with it. So you, the students can download the app and then flip through their flashcards while, while they're waiting in line at the doctor's office or for food. And I've had students tell me that they have actually done that. So like, I'm, thank you so much for the flashcards. I was able just to flip through them as I was waiting for the doctor. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the students, I've had students say, I really like this. I wish other teachers would do it. And I said, Well, you can create your own. Yeah. Not have to wait for other teachers. Yeah, wait for them. Fairly easy to okay. use. So, Luke, can I give a suggestion? Yeah. So last year, I decided to do a comprehensive exam for my ethics class, and and. I had not had time that semester to do a Quizlet with all the def different definitions, and so I put it out to my online class and my face-to-face, -face, and I said, I'm going to go put all the terms in there on your review sheet, and everybody do one definition. Find it in the book and fill it in. And so they all did it together. Nice. And the work was done for you. Yeah. I, I don't have to spend hours and hours. <laughs> yeah, Quizlet's really fun. TED Ed um, builds a lesson around TED Talks. So if you're familiar with TED Talks, or if you're not familiar with TED Talks, you can look that up. Um, but then it creates a lesson around it, and it allows you to kind of elaborate. You can see here that it has, at different points, you can stop the video and insert a question, so you can um, watch, then have them think about a specific question and ask them a question based on that TED Talk, have them think deeper, and then there's also discussion as well with And then Ed Puzzle, so TED, talk, TED Ed, you can only do this with specific TED Talks. And um, Ed Puzzle allows you to create it with any video. So it's kind of doing a similar thing, but with any video. Um, so you can crop the video and then at any point stop it, insert notes, insert audio notes, so, and then record over with your voice, embed quizzes. Is that one of the user family? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is, yeah. Thing Link, um, this allows you to enhance information through embedded um, images. So, if I click on So, what you can do is take a specific image and then you add what are called little hotspots to that image. And then, when someone clicks on that hotspot, Prezi? I'm going to try it. Um, no, not like Prezi. If I click on that specific spot, then it's going to give me more information about the spot that I click on. Yeah. So I roll over and there's a video here about the psychology. So I, could, I, could, I would add these different hot spots to the image. So as I was thinking about how to use this, maybe like geography, if you've got geography and you want to highlight different areas on a map or even anatomy, you want to highlight specific areas of the body, anything that you would take a, an image and then you want to enhance a little bit, ThingLink would be a great tool for that. And then like, like you can see, I can go ahead and add a video to that specific item. Um, this has a link, so is he really a doctor? A link over to Dr. Phil, RC created this one. 
Um, so I can create some different hot spots within that image and then direct the students to more information. Is that what hard to use? No. Yeah, really. Are these free? Everything, yes, except I think explain everything at this point that I've told you has been free. <laughs> yeah. Bing, link. How to, um, kind of an animated PowerPoint, similar to Prezi, but not quite as much motion, motion sickness. Um, so kind of just changes the format of the PowerPoint, brings lesson to your lives, at, or to the life, to, brings life to the lesson, sorry. So you can get some animation going on and some movement, some music, um, kind of just to add a little bit spruce to that PowerPoint. That is the end, or rather beginning. Questions? Then I just have some fun links in here that have absolutely nothing to do with anything. <laughs> yeah, this is called Cat Bounce. Someone has time on their hands to create a website called Cat Bounce. Our department chair says it's like we, we have to hurt cats. So. so there you go, send them this link. <laughs> <laughs> any questions on any of the tools? Uh, thank you for sharing as we went through. Whether you wanted it or not. No, I appreciate the sharing. <laughs> okay. That enhances, enhances the lecture. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, I'll, put the, I'll send the presentation to Rachel, so she'll put it up on, on TLS website, so the links will be right there for you. Free contact you. Sure. Sure. You don't know anything about your skit. I don't. I'll look it up though. But I've you can send it. it. Yeah, we can take a look afterwards. Take a look. Is that you used to take notes? No, this is actually notability. Oh. Are you guys familiar with notability? I I'm not. You were telling me about it earlier. Yeah. An iPad app. I don't have it, but I don't use it very much. Love it. Amanda, if yeah. we wanted to find out more about some of the non-Google, non-Canvas things, do you provide any formalized training on that, or would that just be one-on-one? -on -one? Really a one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, okay. if you had a group of people that wanted some, we could provide it. We really don't okay. support the external tools, but we can help you figure, figure them out. That's, okay. yeah, that's where it gets a little scary, just because of it great. Class. We don't have the capabilities of getting into the program to think about skills. So we, we would need your credentials to be able to troubleshoot. We can help you figure out. We, we love to figure it out. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. I know. I'm glad somebody likes how to do it. I like you to do it and then, and then share your expertise with me. Okay, well, that's what we try to do. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'm done.